Welcome to History Bite. Today, we'll be going through the reasons as to why the former state of Yugoslavia dissolved back into separate countries. Firstly, let's look at the formation of Yugoslavia. It was created in 1918, just after World War I, and was originally called the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. The Kingdom part would later be removed, as many of you can probably tell. Uh, it consisted of Serbia, Macedonia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Slovenia, Croatia, and Montenegro. The original idea was to create a nation for all southern Slavs. Its capital was Belgrade, which translates to White City, and it's the capital of Serbia, the largest of all of the six nations, and overall it was the ninth largest in Europe at the time. So what exactly happened to this great country? Well, Technically, the country broke up twice. The first time was less permanent than the second, of course. Uh, it happened during World War II as a result of Nazi occupation. But this was reversed by the end of the war when the Communist Party led by Josip Broz Tito liberated the country from occupation. As for the second breakup, well, the causes of this one weren't as clear cut, but you can still get a rough idea as to what happened. With many countries, as with many countries, religion and culture played a pivotal role. Each of the nations that comprised Yugoslavia all had varying backgrounds, and these differences between all the groups caused a division. Of course, there were also political factors at play too. Tito died in 1980 at age 87, and this was a problem. Despite being a dictator, he was largely seen as benevolent and a unifying force that helped bind Yugoslavia together. With his death, things began to slowly go downhill. On top of this, the collapse of communism in Eastern Europe, the fall of the Soviet Union and the reunification of Germany all played parts in the worsening of the political situation. With the lack of a possible Soviet threat, the incentive for the different nations to unify was disappearing. One Slobodan Milosevic took advantage of this opportunity and used it to cause conflict between the countries while also gaining favour in his home country of Serbia. This was rather effective as Slovenia declared its sovereignty in 1990, soon followed by Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina. And you may be asking yourself, well, what about the rest of Europe? Surely someone else tried to help mediate things and find a way to satisfy all parties? Nope. There was a very strong, we'll wait and see what happens attitude with all of them. After both Croatia and Slovenia declared independence by 1991, the Yugoslav army invaded Slovenia for a brief 10 day period and then withdrew. However, that wasn't the end. There were Serbs in Croatia that wanted to be a part of Serbia. This led to violence breaking out and the interference from the Yugoslav army once more. This time however it was much worse as many thousands of Croatians died or were displaced. By 1992 only Serbia and Montenegro remained and attempted to form the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia but this wasn't recognised by anyone else. Between 1998 and 1999, extreme fighting broke out in Kosovo, which only ended after bombing and sanctions from NATO. Milosevic was arrested, tried, and eventually died in prison in 2006. Thank you for watching today's video. If you want to hear more Bites of History, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you'll never miss a new upload.